Hey there, it's Kelsey with Jones Gold and Luxury coming at you with another video. Today's topic is what gold carat is the best for jewelry? Any piece of jewelry can be made out of any carat gold. It can be nine carat, it can be 12 carat, etc. And if you're wondering, what do you mean by carat of gold? Well, pure gold is 24 carat. So if your jewelry is 12 carat solid gold, it's 50% pure gold mixed with alloy. Just take 12 divided by 24. In this video, we'll be talking about the most common types of solid gold jewelry, which include 10 karat, 14 karat, 18 karat, 22 karat, and lastly, I will be going over 24 karat, which is pure gold. I do not recommend it for jewelry. However, I will be going over 24 karat gold, just in case it's something you're interested in or considering. I will be going over what karat I think makes the best for gold jewelry. Stop. Collaborate and listen. Are you subscribed? Did you know most people watching this video are not subscribed? If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Now, let's get back to the content. We're gonna start off with 10 karat gold jewelry. It's 41.7% gold with the other percentage being alloys, which consist of zinc, copper, silver, it just depends on the alloy mix. I wore 10 karat jewelry for about six years, day and night. I wore it to the beach. I never took it off at night. I wore it in the shower and I loved it. Everyone hated on me and said, you're wearing 10 karat, that's trash. Reality is I didn't care. It was within my budget and I loved it. And I still love 10 karat jewelry because of my experience. I will say 10 karat jewelry does tarnish. If you're wearing it day and night like I did, and you just never take it off, it actually won't tarnish because the oils in your skin pretty much remove the tarnish or keep it from tarnishing. Also, I wore it in the shower every day, so I'm sure that played an effect. However, in general, if you take off your 10 karat gold jewelry and you kind of store it away for a while, it will tarnish, which is not a big deal. You just have to clean it. Out of all the alloys that we are discussing today, 10 karat jewelry is definitely the most affordable. And it's a great start if you're not too sure that you want to invest in a very expensive piece. Now we're gonna talk about 14 karat gold jewelry. Definitely this carat is the most popular and common in the United States. It consists of 58.3% gold with the rest of the percentage being alloys. 14 karat gold is perfect for daily wear. It's very durable, not as durable as 10 karat because it has less alloy content in the mix, but still very strong comparatively to other higher purities of gold jewelry. Before we get into the other carats, which I consider higher purities, a common misconception is that if you buy a lower purity gold chain, it's going to be harder to sell it or not necessarily harder to sell, but that you won't get much money out of it. Whatever gold carat jewelry you buy, at any moment, it can be refined back to pure gold. So you can take the entire gold content out of the piece of jewelry and separate it. And usually there's a refining fee of two to 4%, depending on where you get it done. When you buy gold jewelry, you are going to pay money the more gold there is. So the more the chain weighs, the more you're gonna pay. The higher the carat and percentage of gold, the more you're gonna pay. Gold is obviously worth more and more expensive than basic alloys such as copper, zinc, silver, etc. Therefore, when you buy a higher purity chain, such as 22 carat, you're paying more for that chain. And of course, it has more gold in it. When you go to sell that chain, if you ever decide to do so, you're going to get paid more for the chain simply because it has more gold. But you have to remember, you originally paid more for the chain to begin with as well. Of course, you're gonna be charged usually two to 4% for the refining fee, and then often another 10% so the gold buyer can make a profit. So really it's all proportional. Whether you buy 10 karat or a higher purity, 
you're going to be selling it for the price that is relative to what you originally purchased it for. You're gonna get more out of a chain the higher the purity, but you also paid more for it to begin with. Just keep that in mind and realize when people say, if you're not buying higher purity, you're not getting really a return on your investment. There's a lot more to that statement than what meets the eye. Next, we're gonna be discussing 18 karat gold. 18 karat is 75% gold, with the rest of the percentage being alloys. My personal favorite carat for jewelry is 18 karat. This particular carat has still a vast majority of gold while maintaining its durability. I have a very good friend of mine who is Italian, and he's worn two 18 karat gold chains since he was a child, and they were passed down from his grandparents. One's a rope chain, and the other one is a Figaro like the one I'm wearing today. The two 18 karat gold chains that he is wearing day and night in every activity that he does have been worn for over 50 years and have been passed down to the next generation. Today, I'm wearing a solid 18 karat gold Figaro chain, also known as the Jester's Link on Jones Gold Luxury's website. As the owner of Jones Gold and Luxury, I chose this particular Figaro chain because of my friend's story. It was so inspiring and something so fascinating and traditional about the Figaro link, and it will always remain in style. 22 karat. All right, now we're getting pretty up there in price. You thought 18 karat was expensive? Wait till you go 22 karat and up. 22 karat consists of 91.6% solid gold, with the rest being alloy. The downside about 22 karat gold is you can't buy very thin chains being such a high purity because there's always a concern that they could dent and deform. You want to stick with pretty much statement pieces, 22 karat and up, because they won't break or bend. Now, they will scratch easily. However, I don't see the problem with that personally. I love higher purity chains because I think the scratching adds character to the chain. There's a common misconception that a scratch on the chain means that you're losing gram weight of gold, and that's just not true. It takes many, many, if not hundreds of years to wear down the gram weight of gold, and it's just not a concern. It's basically the gold going from one location to another when you scratch your jewelry. If your jewelry is not losing gram weight, you are not losing gold content and there is nothing to worry about. In my experience, that has never been an issue, no matter the gold purity. I like to mention these common misconceptions because they're often commented on a lot or asked about. 22 karat is more likely to deform over time, even if it's a very thick statement piece. It's not as much of a concern as 24 karat. However, I would just be very careful. If you're buying 22 karat, I wouldn't sleep in that particular jewelry piece. I've always seen jewelry as something that I just never wanna take off. I think that's why the higher carats kind of get to me. Because if you sleep in the chains, they can tend to deform over time. And as someone who loves to sleep in their gold jewelry and kind of have gold jewelry as like a tattoo where I wear it day and night and do everything with my gold jewelry. It's hard for me to consistently wear higher purities. However, if you don't sleep with your jewelry on or mess with the clasp that often, anything that is high purity such as 22 karat or even 24 karat is just fine. Lastly, we are here to talk about pure gold. 24 karat magic in the air. I can't sing, but yes, 24 karat gold. There is nothing like 24 karat gold. The radiance, the color, the weight, everything about it is magnificent. However, I don't recommend it for jewelry, especially if you sleep with your jewelry like me. If you buy really thick 24 karat pieces, like rings and such, you'll be fine, but they'll be pretty banged up. If you're okay with them kind of looking ratty tatty and having a lot of character, you won't have a problem. However, when you start buying necklaces and chains, that's when they start to deform over time, if you're sleeping in them, etc. If you watch my previous videos, I own a 24 karat Miami Cuban link, 
and I slept in it day and night for about maybe three or four months and that thing just twirls. So that's why I do not recommend 24 karat jewelry, but I truly do have faith and think that 18 karat is perfect. It gives it enough durability while maintaining the high carat purity. That's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out jonesgoldluxury.com for our beautiful gold pieces. In the future, we plan to come out with silver as well. Additionally, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook just to keep in the loop with new information. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can put them down below. It always generates a very interesting dialogue. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see y'all next time. Stay golden.